Hello, my name is Anna Werzer, and today I will be talking about my senior thesis. For my senior thesis, I studied the moderating effect of self-control on the relationship between mental health and compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations. Moderating effect is when a third variable interacts with the relationship between two other variables. So in this case, self-control would be interacting with the relationship between mental health and compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations. Looking at these topics, I thought that they'd be really interesting to analyze because obviously COVID-19 is something that has arisen in the past year and has greatly impacted all of our lives. One of my biggest concerns once COVID started was how this was going to affect our mental health. Mental health is something I'm very passionate about and I was worried that the isolating effects of the measures may decrease mental health. And it's something that we've seen quite a bit in a lot of our communities, unfortunately. When I was looking into topics for my senior thesis, I focused on this topic specifically because I wanted to find ways that we could maybe minimize the effect that compliance to COVID-19 regulations had on mental health as a whole. Looking a little bit into the introduction, I did a lot of research <laughs> on the background of this study in order to find out what the previous literature suggested so that we could move forward with it. In the background, I found that self-control is positively related to compliance and mental health. I found this really interesting because this might mean that it could be a moderating variable. There were also some studies that supported that this could be possible. Mental health and compliance to just general government laws and regulations are typically positively related, but the COVID-19 pandemic created a really interesting social situation in which mental health and compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations specifically were negatively related due to some of the isolating effects of the measures. Looking at these measures, it makes sense because you're no longer able to have some of that social interaction that I think we're all extremely used to. So looking at this relationship, I delved in a little deeper and found that research supported that self-control could potentially have a moderating effect on the negative relationship between mental health and compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations, which is the overall hypothesis. Looking into this a little further, as compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations increases, mental health will subsequently decrease, which is that negative relationship I previously talked about. But here's where the moderating effect comes in, and this is where it gets really interesting. Individuals with high levels of self-control would experience this decrease to a lesser extent than those with low levels of self-control. That means that if you have higher self-control, you'll be less prone to have as severe of a decrease in mental health because of the isolating effects of COVID-19 and all of the safety precautions. That's something we wanted to look into a lot further and we did with this study. For this study, everything was online obviously because we can't do much in person anymore with COVID. <laughs> we had 344 participants, 87 participated and were male, 255 identified as female and then two preferred not to identify. We had Carroll College students, faculty and staff all participate in this and everyone was 18 years of age or older. This study was approved by the IRB prior to anyone filling out any information. And this was done so that we made sure that everything was done ethically and in the best way possible. Looking at the procedure, when participants first were interested in this, they saw it through a mass recruitment email that we sent to all of the Carroll College students, faculty, and staff. We had the survey set up through SurveyMonkey so the mass recruitment email had a link to the survey. And at the end of everything, there was an incentive, which was to enter a drawing for one of three $50 Amazon gift cards. When they first clicked on the link, they were brought to a consent form, which they had to sign an introductory script. They then filled out the measures and read the debriefing script. After that, they were directed to fill out and enter the drawing for one of the three $50 Amazon gift cards. It probably took about 15 minutes total for each participant, and we were able to gather a lot of really interesting data. 
Now let's go a little further into some of the measures that we use, because that's one of the biggest parts in any type of survey-based study like this. We had two different measures of self-control, trait self-control and state self-control. Trait self-control is the self-control that you have from day to day. It varies among different individuals, but does not vary over time. Some people may be more likely to, for example, choose an apple instead of that piece of cake and do that consistently, but other people might be less likely. The same can be said of other decisions involving self-control. State self-control differs in that it fluctuates between individuals, but it also fluctuates from day to day. My self state self-control today was, will likely be much different than what it is tomorrow, depending on how I've used my self-control resources. State self-control centers around the idea of ego depletion. Ego depletion is the idea that we have a limited reserve of self-control that we're able to use each day. And once we've used that resource, we have to wait for it to build up again, for us to use it again. This means that in certain situations, if we've been using a lot of, if we've been making a lot of decisions that cause us to exercise self-control, our state self-control declines. So we looked at both of these types of self-control in order to really be able to get into how this might be affecting mental health and compliance and looking at both of these variables. For mental health, we looked at anxiety and depression. We looked at different levels of each of these through the GAD7 and the PHQ9. And we use these because they're very standardized measures that are commonly used to measure mental health. We combined them to an overall mental health variable so that we could analyze it a little easier and take both into account. And then for compliance, we had a compliance measure that we developed and partially used from Gustafsson and Beckman 2020. It was modified in order to fit our study. And these all had to do with compliance to government implemented COVID-19 safety regulations. All of these measures were taken and then we analyzed the variables. So let's look at the results. This is the fun part, I think at least. <laughs> when we looked at the data analysis, as I said earlier, the moderating variable, self-control. That is both state self-control and trait self-control. We looked at them together and we looked at them separately. The predictor variable was compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations and the response variable was mental health. We ran a multiple regression on all of these variables in order to determine what effect they had on each other. The predictor variable and the response variable means that we thought that compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations would predict mental health. Again, as I said previously, self-control we predicted would modify, moderate that relationship. This correlation table shows that mental health issues are positively correlated with compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations, which means that mental health itself that you would have to reverse to look at instead of mental health issues is negatively correlated with COVID-19 safety regulations as our hypothesis suggested. So looking at all of this, we found that and we found multiple other relationships as well that you can see throughout the chart. Feel free if you'd like to pause here for a second and look at the relationships a little more in depth. For time purposes, I don't have time to go into all of them, but please feel free to analyze them. In this graph, we see that there's a correlation between those mental health measures that I previously mentioned and compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations. So the MHI is the mental health issues overall. That's just the combined GAD7, which is the anxiety measure, and the PHQ9, which is the depression measure. So we see that there is significance here and that they are related to compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations. Here we see that state self-control moderated the effect between mental health issues and compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations. Our state self-control score was significant and that has a lot of really important implications potentially for the field, especially because state self-control is something that can change over time. So looking at what these results actually mean, Minimizing the effect of compliance on mental health means first minimizing ego depletion, which I talked about a little bit earlier, 
in order to increase state self-control, we're being depleted constantly by some of these regulations. But if we can minimize that depletion, we can increase our state self-control, which the study has shown will help to moderate that negative relationship between compliance to COVID-19 safety regulations and mental health. This will help us to keep a higher mental health and not have it be negatively affected. There's a couple different ways that we can minimize ego depletion. First, we can advocate for socially distanced activities. We can increase the availability of masks. And then finally, we can also transition to online platforms for work and school related activities. A lot of us have already done this, but making sure that mental health professionals know of the impact that COVID-19 safety regulations are having on mental health and that this is a way that we could potentially moderate that effect is extremely important so that we continue to implement these for years to come. Hopefully this research will be beneficial to mental health advocates so that they can help their clients if they are working with them at the time and inform other people how to best take care of their mental health during this time. Thank you all so much for listening to my presentation. Here's a list of my references. Feel free to pause and look at them further in depth if you are interested. And I really appreciate that you guys all took the time to listen. Please let me know if you have any questions. You can reach out to me through my Carol email at awerzer at carol.edu. I really hope to hear from you. Thank you again and have a great day. Goodbye.